Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Algebra Tutor. And in this section, we're going to do something pretty interesting. We're going to learn about transformation of functions. So basically, you know, already know what a function is. It's just a graph of you know, something that, that uh, represents what the function is doing. It could look like a parabola or a line or a circle. Well, a circle is not a function, but you know what I mean. Uh, anything that, uh, that that function represents. Okay? And in this section, we're going to learn how to perform transformations on the functions. In other words, how do we shift the function up? How do we shift it down? How do we shift it left and right? How do we make it grow bigger and smaller and, and, uh, and reflect it and do things like this? So we're going to learn how to, how to um, use what we know about functions to graph these translations up and down, left and right, stretching and shrinking and so on. So it's kind of a fun uh, a little exercise. There's really not much math as far as you know, actually uh, calculating anything in this section. It's all graphs and pictures, so let's just jump right on into it. Okay, here are some common graphs that uh, you, you already know, but I'm just going to put them up here for reference to refresh your memory, okay? Uh, the graph of a line uh, just looks like this, and I know you know this, but the graph of a line uh, just goes like this, okay? Here's a graph that goes uh, on, on like this, side to side. It goes on forever in both directions, okay? The uh, graph of a, of a basic quadratic looks like this. And when I say a basic quadratic, something like uh, f of x is equal to x squared. That is going to look like something like, uh, here's your axis here, okay? That is going to look like, the basic one will look something like this. So it goes on and on forever, up like this, and it bottoms out, and that's a basic quadratic, okay? Now, your basic cubic Okay, which would be something like uh, f of x is equal to x cubed. That's why we call it a cubic. Basically looks like this. Here's your x and y, and your basic cubic is going to look like this. It's going to go up and over and like this. And we've gra actually graphed each of these in the previous section, uh, so you kind of know where they come from. This is just sort of review because we're going to end up shifting and scaling these, and so it's going to be really useful for you to know. Okay, another one is the uh, absolute value, which would be something like f of x is equal to absolute value of x, okay? And that one had a pretty unique shape to its graph, okay? That one kind of looked like a upside down triangle, okay? It goes on and on forever like this, okay? And the next one I want to talk to you about is a square root. Okay, which would be like uh, f of x is uh, equal to the square root of x, obviously. And if this was your graph like this, then your square root would start here at zero and it would bend over like this. Okay, the reason it starts at zero is because if you put negative values in for x, you get imaginary numbers because you can't take the, the square root of uh, a negative and get a real number back. So your square root starts here and it just bends over. And we did a we did a problem like that before. And the final one I want to talk to you about is a talked about as a cubic root, okay, a cubic root, and that one is going to look like this, uh, it's going to look like this, it's going to kind of look like a snaky S, like this, like this, okay, so, and that would, by the way, be something like um, f of x is equal to the cube root of x, okay, the cube root of x. So I, I, 